Howdy, pips. How are you guys doing? Uh, today we're gonna do geography now, Greece. And you know, uh, you know, these videos are always so fun to check, especially because they are also very well received by the people. And I love, you know, I love asking questions and people on the comment section and actually answering my questions. So you know, if you want me to react to your country, please type it on the comments, and we'll pro I'll probably do a reaction instantly, like I always do. So. Uh, there we go. Geography now, Greece. Without further ado, uh, before starting, I would like to tell you that if you want to check my links in the description, that'd be really cool. But I'm not. I'm not gonna pressure you to do anything, bro. You're the one that I want. You're the one that I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're the one that I want. You get my reference, right? You get it. I'm so clever, yes. right? Do you get my reference? I'm glad Barb's didn't have a comedy show. You know. <laughs> Geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Greece is sometimes seen as like the cradle and birthplace of European civilization and thought. So much of everything you see today has some kind of yeah. relation to Greece. Pretty heavy for a relatively small country in the Balkans, eh? Now let's find out how it all went down. So let's just jump into it. Greece is located in the southernmost part of the Balkan Peninsula that stretches into the Ionian, Mediterranean, and Aegean seas bordered by four countries in the north and east. The country is divided into 13 regions, one autonomous state that we'll talk about later, and the capital Athens, one of the oldest capitals in the world where nearly 40% of the entire population lives. Wow. Now, despite the administrative makeup, Greece is generally divided into nine geographic regions. Thrace, Macedonia, not to be confused with this place that we already talked about, Thessaly, Epirus, Central Greece, the Ionian Islands, the Aegean Islands, and Greece. Crete. As you can probably tell from its makeup, Greece is one of, if not probably the most, seafaring marine emphasized countries in the world. I mean, they do have the world's largest merchant marine fleet after Japan. And at any given wow. point in Greece, you are no That's... more than 85 miles or 137 kilometers from the sea. Greece has over 2,000 islands, only about 220 of which are inhabited, and about 4,000 extra islets, keys, and sea rocks. Even the ones that are like right off the coast of Turkey. In fact, the only two significant islands belonging to Turkey in the Aegean are Imbros, or Kanachale, and Tenedos, or Voltjada. Now keep in mind the Peloponnesian Peninsula is not an island. I've I've never been to Greece, but my mom like she went and she told me that uh, it was the most beautiful country she would ever seen. Yeah, that's the way she talked about Greece, and I was like, "Wow, mom, really?" Especially because she went to Italy, she went to Spain, she went to uh, uh, Malta, she visited a lot of places, and she said Greece uh, tops all of them out. And I was like, wow, I was, I was shocked. So yeah, she actually wants, to, she told me, I want to be, when I die, I want to be buried in Greece. That's what she also said. So yeah, I guess she likes Greece. Island, it's actually just barely connected by the Corinthian Isthmus in the city of Corinth, which has a huge canal going through it. After independence from the Ottoman times, Greece was very intent on making sure they kept everything in the Aegean. This has historically led to some controversy from Turkey in regards to things like the delimitation of territorial waters, airspace, the executive economic zone, and the militarization of some of the islands. Nonetheless, they've been able to work stuff out, kind of, but some things are still left in a gray zone with the only land dispute they have over these two small scraps of land, the Imia or Karda. Island. Finally, let's talk about the one autonomous state. See this little guy right here, the third finger on the weird monster claw looking peninsula? Well, that peninsula yeah. is called Halkidiki. I was actually Greece thinking now. about that. I was like, wow, that, you know, the shape of that thing, you know, looks like some sort of claw or, yeah, but I'm, I'm glad that he said it. With a population of only about 2,000, Mount Athos, or Holy Mountain, is interesting because it's an isolated monastic state completely run by monks and priests. Getting in is a little tough. The number of daily visitors is restricted, you have to have a special permit, and you have to be a dude. No women allowed. Mm. Although historically, some women have either accidentally or intentionally got in, including this former Greek beauty pageant winner. She dressed up as a man and snuck in. The three largest Yo. cities are, of course, Athens, <laughs> the capital, Thessaloniki, and Patras. That's However, badass. the three largest and busiest airports are Athens, Heracleion on Crete, and then Thessaloniki coming in at third. Speaking of Crete, each inhabited island in Greece kind of has its own charm. Of course, there are too many things to list, but a few to consider might be things like Corfu being the most family-friendly island. Delos is known for being the legendary birthplace Delos. of Apollo. Skyros and Hydra are kind of like the quiet That's island. another thing. Uh, Greek history goes back so long in history, and it's always really interesting that... I don't know. I think it's a really interesting country, especially because nowadays you don't hear a lot about Greece. I don't remember when was the last time I heard about Greece, and it was pro and when I heard about Greece, it was pro it wasn't probably something good. It was probably something about money and the economy. Uh, but yeah, it's so sad because Greece historically it's 
I mean, really important. Islands where more people use mules than cars. Rhodes once held the Colossus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Caria once tried to become its own country at one point in time. Naxos and Paros are known for being the windy islands, great for sailing and water sports. Santorini with its ridiculously picturesque cliffside yes. white marble villas. And Patmos, the incredibly significant religious site in which Jesus' disciple John was exiled and wrote the book of Revelation. Speaking of which, Greece oh. has more archaeological sites per capita than any other country in the world, only ranks behind a few other countries like Turkey and Mexico in terms of overall sites. Hey. Now, we all know Greece is a tourist hotspot. Like France, more tourists than the entire population of Greece visit Greece every single year. Now, we all know about the Acropolis and the Parthenon, but other cool sites that stick out include the Meteora Pillar Cliff Monasteries, the Necromantion of Ephyra, the Oracle of Delphi, St. Theodora's Chapel with 17 oak trees sprouting with no visible evidence of roots, the sculpted face on the shore of Nisi, the Chios former leper colony buildings, the Palace of the Grand Master of the Knights of Rhodes, and of course, hundreds and hundreds of other sites. There are too many lists and if you know of any, please write them down in the comments below and share. In the meantime, we gotta get down to the foundations of the country, the land. Now, there's an old Greek saying, when God made the world, he took the leftover rocks, threw them behind his shoulder, and that's how Greece was made. Uh. I kind of paraphrase that a little bit, don't quote me on it. Too late, it's a quote now. Now, Greece is funny because land-wise, they don't exactly score high on the soil performance index, and overland transportation has always been an issue. But when you pretty much dominate the maritime trading sector, you can kind of turn a semi-arid rock zone into a flourishing agrarian hub. And wait till we get to the Israel episode. They've done quite an interesting job. I can't believe you've been so much money on business people. The on the West Bank. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Talk about the rock. First of all, the country's about 80% mountainous yeah, on both today. the mainland Balkan region and the islands. Two main mountain chains form along the Balkan mainland, the Pindus in the west and the Rhodopes in the northeast, Macedonia and Thrace regions. Right around the area where Thessaly meets Macedonia, you find Mount Olympus, the tallest mountain in Greece, notable for being the legendary home of the ancient Greek gods. Now, with the exception of small boats and canoes, almost all the rivers in Greece are non-navigable as they are too shallow. Nonetheless, the largest river, Aliakmonos, flows through the Pindus range and eventually empties into the Thermaic Gulf right by the Monster Claw. Also, Trihonida, the largest lake can be found in the south-central Greek region. <laughs> Beautiful, right? I love, well, I love how he calls it a Greece Monster Claw. Greece is one of the most seismically active countries in the world as it lies on two major tectonic plate oh, zone, really? I didn't North Anatolian that. Fault and the Hellenic Trench. This means that although frequent, earthquakes in Greece are relatively mild because they usually have epicenters that are in the sea. Or, you know, Turkey just kind of takes the biggest hit. Greece gets about <laughs> 250 days of pure sunshine a year. 7% of the world's marble mines are found in Greece. And they're also the third largest olive oil producer. Speaking of which... I, I guess uh, Turkey and Greece aren't really the best of friends. By the way, now that I'm looking at that sandwich, I had that very similar. I, I think it was in Houston. And I saw and I got as a food something really similar. And I think it was a Greek restaurant. Um, I don't know if there's a lot of Greek restaurants in Mexico. I've never seen one, but the only the one the only ones I've seen are in America. If you've never had Greek food, you are not allowed to die until you do. Popular dishes like moussaka, spanakopita, the classic Greek salad, pita with gyros, Oof. real kind, not that cheap sleazy stuff down on 14th Street in which half the meat is made of cornmeal. Nonetheless, agriculture only makes up about 4% of their economic output. Most of the revenue at over 80% comes from tourism and service jobs. Otherwise, some notable spots in nature would be places like the Vikos Gorge, the Sami Cave in Cephalonia, the Siri E. Kalter Blue-Eyed Spring, wow. volcanic rocks of Lemnos, Neda Ooh. Waterfalls, Pozar hot springs and so much more Damn, in Greece a nutshell has a lot of, like a, rocky, a lot of really really beautiful spots the rugged seafaring realm of merchant ships and olives could have said that like three minutes ago and skipped this whole segment well on to the next demographics winston churchill once said greeks don't fight like heroes heroes fight like greeks Oh snap! <laughs> First of all, Greece has about 11 million people and has oh, one of the highest snap. Asian populations in Europe. The vast majority of the country, at about 93%, are made up of ethnic Greeks, <laughs> and the remaining 7% are mostly made up of other groups like Albanians, Gypsies, and Turks. They use the Type C and F plug outlets. They use the euro as their currency. Although prior to the euro, they used the drachma, which was the oldest consistently used currency in the world, Ooh, and they wow. drive on the right side of the road. Now, pretty much anyone that has ever been to school at around age 12 will know how much Greek history has played a role in the Western world. The history is too long to explain in detail. But in the quickest way I can put this, Minoans, Mycenaeans, tribes and city-states fighting against Persians at Thermopylae, which is where Gerard Butler came in and did this. Alexander the Great <laughs> ushered in the Macedonian Empire. <coughs> Dude, he was what? Greek. No, he no, was yes, not Greek. He, well, yes, he, he was, was never Greek. How many times? He... Then there was... Bro, I love it how a lot of countries have plenty of controversies, especially that go so back far away. Classical Greece, Roman Greece, Byzantine Greece, Ottoman Greece, and then finally a revolution led by this guy in 1821 that started the modern version of Greece that we have today. Thanks to Alexander the Great, multiple regions on three continents experienced some form so of... So that's 
all right for all the greeks watching this video let me get this straight um you know you guys don't really like turkey a lot and was it because they you know greece was inside the ottoman empire at one point is that the controversy because i guess greece got its independence from the ottomans uh, but yeah please explain that a little bit more because i've heard a lot about it Hellenization or the influence of Greek culture and language and it went all the way down into the Byzantine era This means at one point in time even black Africans were speaking Greek or at least the ancient Koine Greek language mm. it Became so widespread that today almost every language in Europe invokes some kind of Greek origin in certain vocabulary For example in English we have Academy telephone grammar and even geography not only that, oh. but Greek has in one way or another been spoken for over 3,000 years, making it possibly the oldest consistently spoken and written language in the world. Yeah. Uh, the Shang Dynasty. And uh, moving on. We could go on and on <laughs> talking about Greece's explosively fascinating ancient history enshrined with legend, myth, wars, yeah. warriors, trade, alliances, gods, beasts, Sparta, sculpture, arts, leaders, philosophers, games, and interesting clothing options. Well, that'll take too long, and we gotta get through this episode. About 90% of the people in Greece adhere to Christianity, mostly in the Eastern Orthodox branch just like many other countries in the slavic world if you've ever met a greek person you'll know that most of them definitely have a unique way of carrying themselves many of you greek geography peeps or as i like to call you geogra greeks have told me that the movie <laughs> my big fat greek wedding is actually kind of a pretty accurate representation of a typical greek family upbringing a little exaggerated but nonetheless not far off big families with strong opinionated parents that you do not talk back to there's always like a weird grandma mumbling something about the turks and one of the cousins is probably lighting something on fire as your brother is getting into a fight but when grandma brings in the souvlaki and moussaka everyone sits down and it's like a beautiful warm norman rockwell painting at least that's the picture I, you geogra greeks have painted for me i don't know how was that was that in the ballpark so anyway in I, greece, think, I think i watched that movie a really long time but I, I guess you'll tell me if it's actually accurate voting is required by law as is conscription for men ages 16 yeah that's right 16 they get them while they're young oh yeah what the five for a minimum of nine months what the hell Many bro celebrate name day instead of their birthdays in which they have a party on the day that pertains to the patron saint that they got their name from land is kind of limited so to save space many of the dead have their bodies exhumed after five years of being buried and then the bones are washed in wine and then placed in an ossuary retirement homes are damn damn greeks that's that's kind of dark are incredibly rare as most Greek grandparents typically end up living in their children's homes. Traditional music can be found everywhere. You'll probably hear a lot of lutes, mandolins, and tambourines. Traditional dances are alive and well. They all usually incorporate some kind of group number with fast-paced movements and jumpy actions. Oh, and old guys smoking while playing backgammon. There's always old guys smoking and playing backgammon. Avoid the <laughs> offensive mutsa hands. And just like we studied in the Estonia episode, Greece has an influx. I don't know, and I'm not gonna ask. Women, like a lot. Somewhere around 60 to 65 percent of the population is female this may or may oh. not be the reason why greece is also the world's most damn guys you know it's time to go to greece how can i put this in a non-crude and vulgar phrasing for our children and viewers um uh, greece is the most hey hey active country in the world they even beat brazil brazil interesting damn you know, greece also has the lowest divorce rate in the they beat the Brazilians. EU as Good well. for them. Speaking of that, okay, let's talk about some numbers. Brutal, brutal, sometimes image tarnishing numbers. Let's just address the elephant in the room and get it over with, okay? Yes, Greece is in a little bit of an economic pickle right now. Basically, in a nutshell, back in 2001, Greece joined the EU. Long story short, they misrepresented their financial statements. They entered an IMF and ECB memorandum. And now the current generation is paying for all the fiscally irresponsible actions the previous one made with things like hiked taxes as well as salary and pension cuts. You know, son, wow. back in my day... Yeah, Back in your day, you ruined my day. Greece also has the highest unemployment rate in the EU as well, with nearly a quarter of the population seeking jobs. Damn. Nonetheless, as depressing as that sounds, Greece actually, interestingly enough, has the lowest suicide rate in the EU. Now, before we move on, here are some rapid-fire notable contributions Greece has made to the world. Inventions like the water mill, alarm clocks, lighthouses, the crane, construction levers, catapults, a crude steam engine, central heating, and technically the first robot. <laughs> Concepts like citizenship, early democracy, wow. atom theory, various fields of mathematics like <laughs> geometry, advancements in Pretty much study, everything medicine, philosophy theater dynamic sculpture and art written history trial by jury and of course wow. the olympics notable greeks would pro wow bro actually just seeing that i was like wow there is a lot of greek influence in our society i don't know what our society means but i mean uh, the greek the greeks were so so it's impressive. Include Eratosthenes, Leonidas, Pericles, Homer, Plutarch, Euripides, Pythagoras, Euclid, Archimedes, and Apollonius, Herodotus, and also... Don't say it. Don't say it. 
Don't say it. Alexander no. the Great. No. No. Yes. Yes. No. I'm going to say is he, not he is Greek. Greek. Yes, he, he is. is. Modern contemporaries like Konstantinos Karathiadori, who taught Einstein, singer Nana Muscuri, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. <laughs> yep, he's actually half Greek. Tommy Lee, Yanni. Soccer. Rest in peace. I think he's dead, right? Yeah. Well, I didn't Muscuri, saw something. The Duke of Edinburgh, days. Prince Philip. Yep, he's actually half Greek. Tommy Lee, Yanni, soccer players, Giorgio Samaras, Giorgios Karayunis, Konstantinos Mitroglou. This crazy guy who ran like a thousand miles in 11 days. Queen Sophia of Spain, of course, America's Greek sweetheart, John Stamos. Don't even try to get on this list. Okay, friend time. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Greece is really old, like, whoa, really old. They've planted so many shifting diplomatic ties throughout the millennia that it's ridiculous. In a nutshell though, they generally get along pretty well with other orthodox countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, as theology and doctrine have always tied them in one way or another. Of those orthodox countries, Serbia is probably hands down the closest childhood friend. Serbians are like the next door neighbor that they grew up with asking if Greece could come out and play ball. Nonetheless, you don't have to be orthodox to roll with Greece. Greeks love the Spanish and Italians almost as much. Each country shares a similar Mediterranean seafaring culture that has historically tied them for thousands of years, although yep. each claim that they have the best olive oil. Greeks have even adopted certain Italian words in their vernacular, like una fazza, una razza, one face, one race. And as mentioned before, Armenia is kind of like the exotic apostolic girlfriend they've been dating since like the third century AD. Turkey is kind of like the whole Japan, South Korea thing in which historically they've had a lot of drama because, you know, Ottoman times, but they love to visit and piggyback off of each other's cultures. Today, there is virtually no <laughs> tension between everyday citizens. They've moved on mostly, and sometimes it's even hard to distinguish a Greek person from a Turk just by looking at them. But make sure you do not make the mistake of mislabeling them. That's a huge no no. When it comes to their best friend, though, almost every Geographer Greek told me Cyprus. Many Greeks don't even really see Cyprus as All a right, yeah. They're just an extension of Greece. They love their little brothers with funny accents and would do anything for them. In conclusion, modern day Greece may only make up about 132,000 square kilometers, but has been the standard source of inspiration for so much of the Western world. The fact is, today you can look around and see how much of our modern society has been in some way, shape, or form molded by something Greek. Kudos Brutal. to Greece. And by the way, kudos is a great word. Stay tuned. Oh, what a way, what a way to end the video. Hey, that was really cool. We learned a lot about Greece. It's a beautiful country, tremendously important in history. I don't know what the world would be without Greece. That's how, that's how deep it gets. But if, you know, if you like the video, subscribe. You know, share it, give it a like, and I'll see you on the next video.